Hey Salt Lake City, if you've been cutting pieces on your laser like this, and you wanna start etching and cutting pieces like this, stick around. I've got four tips to help you do it right the first time, right now. Welcome to Salt Lake City, I'm Steve. I'm in my garage, not the usual workshop. That must mean it's a Glowforge video. We put out weekly videos, so if you find this useful, please consider subscribing. Also, if you like this particular video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Hammers, you know I love them. Strong, powerful. You've known from other videos, Derek's pled with me to not get any more, but I do. Good weight to them. It's kind of an odd shape. This is really bulky and it won't fit under the laser. And the last thing I want my laser head doing is striking into a three and a half pound hammerhead. So what do you do? I'm gonna show you the four tricks I use to etch this hammer handle so you can use it for every weird thing you wanna etch. By the way, what is the weirdest thing you try to cut or etch on your laser? Put it in the comments below. I'm curious and afraid. Holy crap, my hair's getting long. Tip number one, know the thickness of your cutting surface. I'm not afraid to admit it. We all used magnifying glasses to start fires as a kid. If you're a real horrible person, you used it to go attack ants. So if you've done that, you know that focus and getting that point as small as possible is everything. If that magnifying glass is out of focus by an inch, the whole thing is shot and you're not gonna start a fire for anything. Consider your laser and your glow forge the same thing. So knowing that focuses everything. It's imperative that you get the laser beam as narrow and as focused as possible on your cutting surface. If you got proof grade material, it calculates it for you. When it's a flat piece of material, like acrylic or wood, you just measure the thickness of the material and that's the thickness above the crumb tray. It gets a little trickier when you've gotta pull the crumb tray out. And this is where we've got a little math. So take some notes, because these numbers aren't gonna change ever. The way you figure out the height, number one, you need the height of the etched surface above the steel plate on the Glowforge. To get that measured most accurately, use the plunge measurement on your calipers, and it'll tell you exactly how high that material is. Number two, you need the measurement of the crumb tray. What is the actual measurement of the crumb tray? Well, that doesn't change, and so that part's easy. Put it on a sticky note, write it on a piece of tape, and stick it on the side of your laser. If you've got a Glowforge, that never changes. It's 1.361 inches, or if you're using metric, it's 34.6 millimeters. Once you've got those two measurements, you just subtract the crumb tray measurement from your surface measurement, and you enter that into the Glowforge as your material thickness. So in this case, my hammer handle was 1.62 inches above the bed of the Glowforge. Once you do the math, the thickness at that point is 0.259 inches, and you throw that in, you're good to go. Perfect focus. Tip number two, keep it level. If you remember one of our early videos, we threw my MacBook into the Glowforge, and if you wanna see that video, it's linked right here. The color of the engraving actually changed on the MacBook depending on where it was. And that's because the MacBook had a curve to it. So the focus changed. You gotta keep whatever you're cutting or etching level. That ensures an even etch all the way across your surface. I don't wanna buy anything I don't have to. So rather than go to the hardware store and buy shims, I'll use scraps of old material instead. They're laying around, I've got plenty of them, and it keeps my projects level. What do you do to make sure it's totally flat? I use a level. Obviously first you need to level out your Glowforge, but then you throw this on top just before you close the, the bed and you're good to go. Number three, the tape test. Question number one, what is duct tape good for? A, taping ducts together. B, making wallets. Or C, duct work. I usually talk about transfer tape. I like it because it's big, it's wide and I can cover my material quickly. This is a case where painter's tape has the advantage. And the reason is it's blue color. Just where you're gonna etch, you put the blue tape and you run the laser at a very, very low setting. Just enough to discolor the tape. What that's telling you is this is where the laser is gonna cut or etch or mark, but it's not gonna touch the material underneath the tape. Once you've got it centered exactly where you want your material, don't touch it. You turn up the settings to where they should be and go. That way, it's all lined up, it's perfect, and you haven't ruined the surface of your material by trying to align it so many different times. Tip number four, lock it down. So a couple of people have been to my workshop and they see all this, these scraps of wood and they wanna know why do I leave them around here? Why don't I just chuck them? Simple, I like to make these. This is a honeycomb pin 
a really simple design. I'll link to it below. I take my scraps and I make a ton of these. This fits in the crumb tray. And what you do is you put it in the crumb tray and you hold down the corners of whatever it is you're making. If it's something big and heavy like a hammer, this isn't gonna help you. If you're looking at something like paper or cardstock, where the fan and the Glowforge could move that material around, just lock it down with a couple of these. The great thing is, it's gonna break, but you don't care because you've got a box more made from your scraps. This makes the most of the material you're already using. So those are my four tips that'll help you etch nearly anything on your laser. If you've got some tips that have worked for you, leave them below. I know I'm still learning. And with that, let's keep calm and make off.